Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include Cut EU red tape to save billions, business chiefs tell Cameron. Romania and Bulgaria are the worst democracies in the European Union. And now the EU wastes £450 million on profligate scheme to improve trees. German renewable energy transition criticised by the EU. Plus, EU citizens can cast their vote in European and local elections from abroad. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. The European Union should cut or amend 30 pieces of red tape in a bid to ease regulation on British businesses, a panel of leading businessmen will warn the Prime Minister. The government-appointed panel, including Marks & Spencer's Chief Executive Mark Boland and former Diego Chief Executive Paul Walsh, are set to tell David Cameron to push through changes at a European level which could save businesses billions of pounds. High on the agenda to be axed are regulations surrounding chemicals, health and safety and employment laws. Here we go again. Two weeks ago we reported the CBI stating there was no appetite in business for a UK outside of the EU. Today's report appears to be the opposite view. Let me tell you about the example of We Can Eco. Now, this company makes and distributes around 2,000 different organic and environmentally responsible cosmetics and domestic products hair care, skin care products, etc. The business was established about five years ago and it had done well in a difficult climate, but to produce its products it had to have each one tested to meet EU regulations. Well, in the recent round of regulation changes, those 2,000 products now have to be retested. Each time, that's going to cost the company about £250 per product. Well, you can see immediately that that becomes almost untenable. We're talking about a £50,000 capital investment just to test those products. And why? For what purpose? Well, because the EU decided to change its directives or change its legislation. And you mean to tell me that this is helping business? This is folly, pure folly. Romania is one of the worst democracies in the European Union and many member states are backsliding away from democratic principles according to a new report. The backsliders study by Demos, a think tank for the European Parliament Socialist and Democrats group, said the current financial crisis has heightened the anti-democratic trend but it wasn't the sole factor in the regression. UKIP has been warning about the likely issues with immigration as of January 2014, as the UK's ability to veto immigration from Romania and Bulgaria lapses. The EU, as we reported earlier in the year, has an active programme targeting the Roma, essentially the gypsy class of Romania. Lots of positive rhetoric about equal rights, etc. The tragedy is that in Romania, the Roma are treated like an underclass and are made very unwelcome and are often actively discriminated against. Once those gates open for free movement, do you think they will stay where they are? After all, faced with oppression and discrimination, or the promise of a better life for you and your family abroad, what would you do? Watch this space and we'll keep you posted. The European Court of Auditors said the forestry scheme was riddled with deficiencies in the programme across the board and it was not possible to tell whether the grants had helped because member states were not even required to value the forests before getting the money. The ECA found that grants were made over the past five years to projects that were not eligible for the cash and it said the costly scheme went ahead even though the EU had not analysed the forestry sector so as to justify specific financial support aimed at improving the economic value of forests. Oh <laughs> well, what can I say? Surely that's not the EU jumping to conclusions and doing doling out taxpayers' cash without concluding what or where it might be used. That's so unusual. I think we've only got about a hundred cases of similar tales of fiscal tomfoolery in the archives of our website. The European Commission, the legislative arm of the European Union, has issued a report criticising the energy revolution occurring in Germany. 
While the European Commission has been a strong advocate for renewable energy, the costs associated with Germany's transition away from fossil fuels and nuclear power has raised some concerns. The report issues recommendations concerning Germany's energy transition and outlines actions the country should consider taking in order to mitigate costs and make the move towards renewable energy less turbulent. Well, no doubt the turbulence pun is intended, but there is a strong positive to be drawn from this strategy, but one that's not really being highlighted by the mainstream media. Development of a sustainable energy supply within the nation provides enormous economic advantage in the long term. Now, by long term, I mean 20 to 50 years. Irrespective of what your beliefs are on climate change, the political kleptocrats are not going to step down from their carbon reduction stance, and that means that fossil fuel costs will increase, making industry less competitive. Germany's renewable strategy, touted as setting an example for the rest of Europe, is, in actual fact, the perfect strategy for Germany to maintain and dominate the European Union. Perhaps the UK government should consider strengthening its investment in a programme. Oh yes, but I forgot it can't, because it's um, £1.4 trillion pounds in debt, and Chairman Cameron is too busy lying to the people by saying the Conservative government has reduced Britain's debt. Not just a fabrication, but a solid bare-faced lie. What he is actually talking about is the Conservatives have reduced the deficit, which simply means they have lessened the amount by which the UK's £1.4 trillion overdraft increases each month. European Union citizens will be able to use their right to vote in European and local elections more easily when living in another EU country, following legal action by the European Commission. The news comes as the Commission on Thursday closed infringement proceedings against Bulgaria for applying additional requirements to non-Bulgarian EU citizens wishing to vote or stand as a candidate in local and European elections. Ah, this piece of diktat by the Commission is going to put the cat amongst the pigeons. On face value, you read this article and you think, well, so what? But let's take an analogy for a moment. Imagine you are living in nice little two-up semi in Wooden Bassett, rural Wiltshire. Your polling cards arrive through the door in May for the 2014 European elections. And to your dismay, the candidate list reads, Herr Wolfgang Schumacher, EDF. Carlos Santiago, EDG. You suddenly realise there is no one from your county. N nigh no one from your country on the polling card. The cold chill of sudden realisation grips you. Your choices are not choices at all. In the next 24 hours, the governance of your local regional agenda will transfer to either Germany or Spain. Scaremongering or a powerful analogy of a seemingly innocuous piece of commission diktat? You decide. Today saw episode two of our live interactive show, Critical Thinking. In it, we discussed the history, structure and development of the European Union. Using Google Plus and their tremendous hangouts on air video conferencing tools, our guest panel debated the development of this political behemoth, initiated as the Coal and Steel Union shortly after the Second World War and sold to many early members, including Britain as a common market, the European Economic Community. We see standing before us a huge and powerful world-class governmental institution developed by stealth and very intelligent political craftwork. Now I encourage you to come and join us on Google+. Get involved with our community, the unit. We are building a grassroots movement, one that is a flat political landscape where everyone's voice is equal and everyone's voice is heard. Now I want you to join me as a guest on the panel, get involved in the discussions and show our friends, viewers and followers that they are not alone, that so many of us now see what has been done to our democracy and right to self-governance. It's time for us to take it back. It's time for us to say no to a ruling class, no to the 1% and no to all the lies and yes to freedom of speech and choice. So come on, come and join us. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>